I guess I want to start with an apology. Uh, if you were here last month, you heard me mention that my mother had just died. And several of you were kind enough to come up and offer your condolences, and, and I said what you wanted to hear. I said thank you. It was a very aggressive cancer. It was quick. There was no pain. I've said that to a lot of people lately. I guess it's not that I was lying, but I was certainly telling people what they wanted to hear. At the memorial service, there were people that I hadn't seen since my childhood, neighbors from our block outside Detroit, and you know, people that I'd gone to school with, old family friends, people that I haven't seen in 30, 35, or 40 years. And a lot of them came up and said, oh, your mother was so wonderful. She was such a, a caring person. You know, she really was the queen of the block. You know, the neighborhood revolved around her. And I have no idea who they're talking about. I have a different memory of my mother. It's a memory of her face twisted in rage with one of her hands wrapped in my hair so that she could hold me while the other hand hit me. That's the mother I knew. It was the 70s for you college students, ask your parents. Child abuse wasn't necessarily tolerated, but there was a looser standard. So while other kids were living out normal childhoods, running around the neighborhood, playing with their friends, I didn't do that. Uh, I learned early on that it was a lot safer for me to stay in my room reading. I read the Encyclopedia Britannica cover to cover because if I was in my room quiet and reading, mom wouldn't get angry. I certainly didn't have friends from the neighborhood or anywhere else come over to play. Um, maybe subconsciously, I think I was protecting them, protecting myself, but just keeping them away from, from my mom. It was a childhood of terror, not of play. And a friend of mine said, without knowing any of this, said, well, think back to a memory of your mother. And the memory that I came up with was of me running through the house, her right behind me, both of us screaming for different reasons, trying in vain to jump over the couch, to get behind the couch, because I didn't think she could reach me there. Another friend of mine said, well, try to think of the best memory of your mother. And I know without a doubt that the best memory was the day that I was big enough that she tried to hit me and I caught her arm and stopped her. That may have eased things up for me, but her attentions shifted to my sister after that. I can't, I, I don't, I never wished my mother dead. I'm not a monster. I never wished that she would die. But I can look back in the last six weeks and tell you that I haven't felt any grief. This morning back in Michigan, we buried my mother's ashes. And I can tell you that what I'm feeling is relief. Relief. 